Paul, good to be back. Great to be back, and uh, especially on a special day like today as well. It's it's an honour to be here. I got the invitation a couple of weeks ago, and straight away, you know, said yes. Email, text, sent back, phone call to make sure I was on the on the guest list, and just an honour to be here today for the unveiling of Jack. That special picture of him yeah. comes up as a special moment it for does. all the guys he played. It in. does. Like he, he, I keep looking at it, and some of the speeches is we've touched his heart from the playoff final. So to get that, it, there could have been thousands of pictures that could have gone off our statues. Gone to pick that picture out and and put it in bronze. That remembers the playoff year as well, and and it's fantastic. And it, it it does it does look like him. That's the thing. Some statues don't look like each other, like Ronaldo's, for instance. That they're not not the great looking, but that is Sir Jack all over. What was he like as a person? Quiet man, quiet man. But if you need anything, he was always there for you. And when we had meetings, me and the gaffer Dave Jones, he'd always say to us, "The players need anything? Let me know. If they need to go away for two days, let me know. If they need a golf day, let me know." It was always for the players and the club, and he wanted always to ask. But he'd always keep himself in the background as well. He was never the one for standing in front or coming down to dressing rooms. He'd keep his way from all that, and just let us get on with it. And if we need anything, he'd try and help us out. What do you think he'd have made of today, having that statue, the amount of people that've been here? He wouldn't have liked it. Seriously, I don't think he would have liked it in the sense of the, the humble guy he is, he would have stayed in the club. <laughs> if he was still alive today, he probably would have sat in there and said, I'm not walking around there. And, but that's the type of guy he is. He, was, he never put himself first. He put the club first and the club is at his heart. And you got to remember that the history I've been spoke about, Bully there before. The club was in a bad way when he got took it, when he took over. And to lift it and to see where it is today and where it was in 2003, 2004, I get the same feeling. Like the, the fans are together, the, the team on the pitch is together, Nuno is together, the board are together. And that's what the feeling is again. I can feel it in the, in, in the, in the especially when the fixtures out today, Everton, home game, be good. Yeah, because his big dream was to establish Wolves back in the top flight in yeah. the Premier League. Yeah. We're, we, we're yeah. back there now. How much do you think the current team can actually go on and, and succeed? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there's no disrespect to us. I think the current team have, have got more ammunition than we had at the present time. To, so I think they'll survive. They're, they've got a better uh, survival than we did at the time, but. Nuno's got a few players that he's brought in or he's looking at and bringing in. And I, if you give me four from bottom, I'll take it. I know the Wolves fans are going to go, no, we want a top 10. Top. Four from bottom and another 13 clubs will probably say that now in the Premiership as well. And then build and have that, have that mould what Burnley are doing and add players every year. And, but I think they'll have a good season. I think they've, you've got a feeling and because Premiership clubs are watching them from last year in the Championship and seeing what they're doing and seeing what the noise is going on down the road. And he's been shrewd, do you know, with the players he's looking at and the players bringing in and the philosophy of what the club's about. And it's exciting times. And now we've seen the Everton fixture. And I think Man City two games after that, is it? So, yeah, looking forward to it.